And we welcome you back to the Sports Group 2.0. HSRN, keeping it real, tagging up, and you're ahead for home. But I tell you where I would like to be heading right now. I'd like to be heading to South Beach. Now, again, not necessarily one that's comfortable with flying anywhere in the days of COVID-19. But if I was going to jump on and fly, I would be flying down to Miami where things are looking pretty good right now. I mean, consider you've got college football and pro football starting with both the U and the Dolphins looking to make their moves up the ACC ladder and the NFL's AFC East division ladder. You've also got the real story being the Miami Heat who are now four games away from the NBA Finals. And yes, sir. You, you expected Boston to be in the semis. You expected uh, Toronto to make the semifinals. And I'm pretty sure you had in your pool um, Milwaukee to make it there too. What you may not have had was the Miami Heat. And you probably didn't have them going to the – conference finals but Jeff Fox from Miami certainly did Jeff and Gigi Fontaine holding it down with the Jeff Fox show it too can be found all over the place in cyberspace and my brother behind the microphone Jeff Fox joins us from Miami where the temperature's got to be near 100 and uh oh yeah look like you're tired and refreshed (laughs) Yes, sir. I just came in and uh, just got slid up in here, man, to join you on the show. And I got to tell you, man, the buzz around town is all about the Miami Heat. Uh, This team has only lost one game so far in the bubble. And South Florida is, should I say, bubbly about the Miami Heat right now because this team is showing the uh, makeup of its head coach, Eric Spolstra, who I consider a top five NBA head coach, maybe even top three. Uh, right now, Spolcher's done a magnificent job with his team. Um, basically, almost swept his first two rounds into the conference finals. I'll be honest with you, Mark, I did not see this coming. You know, I spoke with Stephen A. Smith when the ESPN was down here for the Super Bowl, you know, before the pandemic and all that, when life was great <laughs> down here in the 305. But um, and Stephen A. said the Heat needed another piece. He thought they needed another big, you know, and uh, they just have this culture down here where this team fights, and it's been passed down throughout the years. This team constantly overachieves, and here we are once again. (laughs) You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. In in all honesty, you had a big – his name was Hassan Whiteside, and it cost you a couple of seasons with Dwayne Wade. So it's amazing to watch. But this team is really the personification of the culture down there. You add a player like Jimmy Butler, he comes in and is the missing link to get you to the finals. So let's talk about where they were 12 months ago and where they are right now. Was there a sense they were ready to take the step as the season was moving forward? Or did you get the sense that, okay, we got nice parts. This is house money. But there were no expectations. What were the realistic expectations of Heat fan going to the bubble? There were none. We knew we were a number five seed. We felt we were better than Indiana. uh, But we thought it would end with Milwaukee. We were, I mean, even though the Miami Heat played the Bucks very well throughout the regular season, they were two and one, uh, the only loss coming against the Bucks in the bubble. And Miami matches up well. We knew we had a shot, but I just figured that the Greek freak, along with Chris Middleton and some timely shooting from Brook Lopez and, and Eric Bledsoe in the fold, I just didn't see it for the Miami Heat getting past this team. Once again, with that Jimmy Butler, that mentality and that culture, and, and then you throw in Coach Spo, not to mention the rookies who haven't been playing like rookies. Kendrick Nunn finished second in the Rookie of the Year balloting, and, and Tyler Hero, I never even heard of this kid coming out of Kentucky. Tyler Hero is my new favorite player on the Miami, Miami Heat. 
because he's fearless. He hits big shot after big shot. You got that nice mix of youth that you factor in a Jay Crowder that they acquired and uh, uh, Andre Iguodala that they also acquired. And you got the nice mix of veterans and youth. It's been great. And he's got good hair, too. You got to give credit <laughs> where credit is due. Oh, yeah. I'm you sure, nice I'm good sure he catches a lot of hate from the white guys for no other reason than just because he's got really good hair. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty fly for a white guy, as they say that. <laughs> like, you know, Tyler Hero is invited to the barbecue. Like, yeah, he, indeed. Right. You know, he probably brings some ribs. Yeah, he's got that Tom Chambers kind of thing about it. Remember Tom Chambers back in the day? You know, Tom Chambers played, you know, and, and not to sound racist or anything, but like a brother. Like, he would dunk on dudes. You know, he would house dudes taking the ball to the hoop. Tyler Hero ain't scared of nobody. And then you got the general, Goran Dragic, and Jimmy Butler with his mentality, the tough guy that he is. If you want him to score – He'll, be Jimmy, he'll become Jimmy Buckets and give you 40. If you need him to defend, he'll take the best player on the opposing team. Like he asked Eric Spolstra, give me Giannis. Let me get him. You know? And the guy, the glue guy on this squad is Bam Adebayo. I mean, Bam has, I had no idea Bam would turn into this. The all-star that he is. 26 and 10 the other night. Uh, he rebounds. He blocks. He defends. And he pretty much, man, they neutralized uh, Giannis in that Milwaukee series. And they counted on the other guys beating him and beating us. And the other guys couldn't. I mean, Middleton is timely with the mid-range shooting. But when it comes to fourth quarter time that I like to call winning time, the Miami Heat have this closing lineup, you know, and uh, they apply the pressure and they squeeze the life out of you. That's what they did to the Milwaukee Bucks. Talk about the job that Eric Spolster has done with this team, not only from the X's and O's and the number of wins, but the player development, the the way that you've seen Hero improve during the course of the season, mm -hmm. the way that you've seen Adebayo go from really good prospect to all-star, and then you blend all these new faces, including Jimmy Buckets, in to a cohesive unit. And when I look at that guy, I mean – you strip everybody else from the overabundance of talent that they seem to have. I mean, X, X's and O's now. Can we now start putting Eric Spolster in that, you know, top three, four coaches in the league right now, in your opinion? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Eric Spolster has proven himself when he first got the job. And I told Spo this himself. Uh, I told Spo that when we got the, the big three with Wade, Bosch, and LeBron, I was disappointed that the Miami Heat hired him. I wasn't afraid to tell Eric Spolster this because you can talk to him like that. He's a, you know, he's a down-to-earth kind of guy. And he was like, you know what, Jeff? I appreciate that. Keep doubting me. I want people to keep doubting me because Eric Spolster believes in Eric Spolster. He's a Pat Riley protege, and he never felt overwhelmed when we had the big three. He welcomes new challenges. I remember when Dwayne Wade retired. I said, Spoke. Who's going to take the last shot? He said, you know, we're a team by committee. That's how we run it down here. We have a culture. And when it comes to X and O's, you know, I thought this dude, man, uh, seriously, when he, coming out of a timeout, watch the Miami Heat coming out of a timeout. They always have something up their sleeve which speaks volumes to the head coach. So Spo basically has, has crafted this team in his image. You know, they play phenomenal defense. In spurts, because they're not always great defensively, but they are awesome when it comes to the three-point shooting and collapsing defensively on a key guy. No one guy is going to beat them. So before I let you go, uh, what does it take for Miami to beat Boston in this series? Um, it's going to take a hell of a lot more of what we saw in the Milwaukee series. Uh, I think Jimmy Butler is going to have to be a bit more aggressive offensively I love the fact that Jimmy Buckets gets to the foul line constantly, gets some free points there, and I'd like to see more of that. What scares me about Boston is their wing players in their backcourt. You know, can we match up with, with Boston? So, I'm, Jeff, I want to uh -huh. shift gears, talk a little bit about football, certainly mm -hmm. the pro side and Brian Flores. He 
seemed to have got the ship back on track last year. They look like the Dolphins do a team that's turning the corner. But we've seen that under guys like Jimmy Johnson, Uh um, to a lesser extent, Adam Gaze. And when they got around the corner, they got clipped. What's going to keep this team from being clipped? I got like two minutes. Ryan Flores, man, he comes from that great Patriot legacy. And I get it that some of a lot of Bill Belichick's protégés have struggled when they left the, the nest out there in New England. Not so with Brian Flores. I think this guy is going to be a great coach. He's a hard worker. He's a motivator. He's a no-nonsense guy. He's got a hold of that locker room. We won't have any more assistant coaches sniffing cocaine, you know, and we won't have any uh, bully gates, uh, the type of embarrassing situations that we've seen in South Florida. He is working closely with the GM, Chris Greer, I might add the only black head coach Jeff Fox at GM. from Miami breaking yeah. us off and quickly give me 30 seconds on the U. Can I break out my U gear this year or will it go to the back next to the New York Knicks stuff? Um, it's all we say it every year, man, that the U is all going to be about the U, but I can't really tell, man. Um, you know, every time we get excited about this football team, we're disappointed. Ed Reed is not walking through that door. You know, Willis McGay, he's not coming through that door. Uh, we have to create new Miami. Uh, Miami that Hurricanes. is the incomparable Jeff Fox rocking the box. Don't forget, you can check him <laughs> out all over the place in cyberspace. Yes, Jeff sir. and Gigi Fontaine, who I must say, bro, that is one of the great names in sports. <laughs> Gigi Fontaine. Yes, yeah, she is. She, she is, and she will argue <laughs> you down every time, man. Every time. Hey. Hey, love, love what you're doing, man. Look forward to holler back at you real soon. And, uh, you know, enjoy yourself down there. You're playing with house money in Miami this weekend? No better place than to be playing with the house than on South Beach. Appreciate, I appreciate you, bro. You. No doubt, man. Y'all be good. Thank you All so right. much. Thanks a lot. All right. <laughs> Jeff Fox rocking the box from South Beach. Appreciate you for hanging out with us as well as we rock on the Sports Groove 2.0. Thank you for hanging with me. I am Mark Gray. That's spelled Mark with a K. Gray with an A. Remember, you can find me all over the place in cyberspace at The Sports Groove. That's 24-7, 365 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, as you're hanging out this weekend, try this. Mask up. Proper social distancing, wash your hands, and give somebody you love a hug tonight. You may not get a chance to do it tomorrow. In 23 hours, I'm Mark Ray. I'm back at you. Holla at your folk. Deuces.